All right, this is first grade, module one, lesson 20. And in this lesson, uh, students are gonna be applying the commutative property in order to count on from the larger add end. For example, suppose we had seven plus two. All right, so what we've been teaching our students is to do the count on method. Start with that seven and you know count with a fist. Seven, then we say eight, nine. And because we've counted up to our two, and because the last number I said is nine, that says that seven plus two is nine. Seven, eight, nine. But what if the problem was written in the other way? What if it said two plus seven? We want students to understand that the commutative property of addition allows us to switch the numbers around so that we can start with the larger number. Otherwise, students would see that two plus seven and think that they have to say two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, they've counted up to seven, and because that last number they said is nine, the answer is nine, but that's not the most efficient way. Really what we want is students to understand that they can use the commutative property, take that two plus seven and reverse it to seven plus two, and then they can go ahead and be efficient. Seven, eight, nine. So here we're being asked to take this situation and write it in a number sentence where we begin with the larger part, the larger add end. So I'm looking at this and I've got a basket of seven pieces of fruit and then I've got two little pieces of fruit right here. And so what I want our students to do is I want them to write seven plus two and that allows them to punch the air with seven, seven, and then count up two, eight, nine. And that gives us the answer of nine. Uh, our number bond over here, now that we see the number sentence, it's pretty easy. Our number bond over here is gonna say our missing value is two, and our total is nine. Uh, teachers, it's really important that at some point, if a student in this case, this problem, wants to write the problem seven plus two is equal to nine, that's also okay. Uh, a key thing is when we're talking about the commutative property, we are not saying that seven plus two equal nine and nine equals seven plus two is an example of the commutative property. That's not true. This is not the commutative property. That's actually the reflect reflexive property. Um, the commutative property is saying if the problem says seven plus, uh, two plus seven is equal to what, we are allowed to reverse it to be seven plus two and then count on using the larger number first. And this is an example of the commutative property. But ultimately, really all we wanted to do up here for question two was this part up here. Simple little example, starting with the larger part. So I'm looking at my number bond here, and the larger part is six. So they want us to write six plus one. And then counting on, I'm going to hold my fist and say six, and then seven. So the answer is seven. So our missing value over here in the number bond is seven. Last example for this video. Looking at our number bond, we have our parts. We're missing our whole. We were asked to write our number sentence where we begin with the larger part. So that would be a five and a four. And then, of course, we're going to hold our fist and we're going to say five. And then we're going to count up four spaces. Six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm holding up four fingers. And since I said nine, that means the answer is nine. So our missing value right there is nine. Oh, it's fun, teachers, to say that students could also write four, is, four plus five is equal to nine.
They could also write 9 is equal to 4 plus 5, and they could also write 9 is equal to 5 plus 4. So for your high, high flyers, teachers, go ahead and let them come up with all the different expressions, uh, equations, number sentences, that they could write for this number bond. And that wraps up first grade module one, lesson 20, where we are applying the commutative property so that we can use the count on method efficiently.